It was his gift, and he was the best. What I'm saying is just assume that this guy can hear and see everything that you're doing. He's a born tactician. Every move that he makes, it means something. That's a pawn being moved off the board. And if I were you, I'd be looking for the next piece. No, you can't stop him. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Supreme Decisions. And today, I want to go into ineffectiveness of counsel. I kind of touched on this for a hot second um, once before, but today I want to go into where it actually comes from or originates. And I also want to get into what it entails for this to be a successful challenge. Strickland v. Washington, 466 U.S. 668 1984. It was the case that set up or established a standard for determining ineffectiveness of counsel. And it's determining when a Sixth Amendment um, right to counsel is violated by the counselor's inadequate performance. Now, a lot of us have those things that go on, and generally they begin and end with a court appointed attorney that is overwhelmed. Now, I've gone over portions of the standard which is the requirement of time to even look into things i've even talked about hearings where challenges need to be made because that's where the best defense for anyone comes from challenging every step of any accusation and in this this will be a performance-based cause because the first one will be the counselor's performance fell below an objective standard for reasonableness now Reasonableness is bringing your ass a plea bargain, but it also entails putting together a strategy for you to win or that is best or most beneficial to you that you are willing to accept. That's where the guidelines get tricky from because it's what you are willing to accept, what you are allowing to be brought to you. And if you are giving instructions or as I commonly say, are you exercising? because they're going to do whatever it takes for them to generate revenue. You know that going in. So if you're not exercising, you are saying what they're doing is okay and you are complicit in their actions. That's where the reasonableness falls into. The second one will be, the counselor's performance gives rise to a reasonable probability that if the counselor had performed adequately, the result would have been different. Now again, these are things that we're seeing for the poor because they are not being represented pretty much adequately because they are not being set up for strategy. They are not being done, for the most part, done right, which is why you have over 800,000 people in jails now because of bond. You also have so many people being freed from death row because of ineffectiveness of counsel because that is the leading cause for many cases being retried, reheard, and people being released from death row. Now, again, Strickland v. Washington, 466 U.S., 668, 1984. And when the counselor's performance falls below the standard that is required for them to set up the best defense for you. That's all we got for right now. I want to thank everybody that's been donating. Again, um, even with the podcast, we're set up now. You can actually donate to the podcast. You can actually send um, a monthly support system, as, as you can say. And it'll be either for $0.99, cents, $4.99, or $9.99 per month, which will be billed on the first of every month. So that's great for the podcast. Now, those that are donating to the channel, it's still the links that are in the description and we've added PayPal. So for all of you that have that, PayPal is working. We actually got it back and we're going strong. So PayPal, Apple Pay, Venmo, Cash App, and Google Pay. 
And for those that want to send money directly from their bank via bank wire, we have Zelle. That way all you need is an email address and it goes right through and it doesn't cost you a cent. So let's keep going, let's keep growing and I'll see you guys next time.